Anthony Edwards is one of the most electrifying players of the past couple decades, and his beaming confidence and nightly highlight reels have drawn comparisons to Michael Jordan, which leaves the ultimate question of just how high really is Anthony Edwards' ceiling. His fourth year in the NBA has shown improvements in things like playmaking and efficiently finishing at the basket, and that has catapulted his Timberwolves squad to the top of the Western Conference. And while his scoring and assists may be at career highs, what about the rest of his game? And what areas need improvement? Let's first start with what makes Ant such a deadly offensive weapon. Ant combines his speed and crisp handle to break down perimeter defenders, and he has a nice change of pace with his handle. He can freeze defenders with hesitation moves and crossovers, notice the slow to fast change of speed with this crossover, and at about 6'5 with shoes on, he is one of the best finishing guards in the NBA. That springy athleticism allows him to hang and adjust midair for difficult finishes. He can also brace contact mid-flight to finish up and through contests at the basket. He mixes in a smooth arsenal of Euro steps, accompanied by decelerated finishes like here. Notice how the deceleration opened a brief window for him to score. According to B-Ball Index, Ant is shooting a career best 61% at the rim this season on high volume. This is a 4% improvement from last season and he has improved in this area every year since he's entered the league. Ant is an aggressive and physical driver, often initiating and absorbing contact on his drives and this in turn leads to a respectable rate in fouls drawn. He's usually sturdy on his drives, but sometimes initiates contact for these tough, low percentage, one-legged fadeaways. Ant is crafty in the pick and roll when exploring for options to score near the rim. Look how he seals the perimeter defender behind him to get to the middle. He excels particularly at turning the corner on screens, and that usually leads to a highlight. He's a huge threat splitting the pick and roll. He loves to use this between the legs dribble to split and get to his trampoline. He has a solid shooting touch from outside, making a respectable 36% from three, a 1% decrease from last season. But it's important to note that he was shooting over 41% from three before the month of March this season, and has been shooting 30% since. And I think this has something to do with the hand injury he suffered when he took the soul of John Collins. Ant is deadly on catch and shoot threes, shooting a little over 40% on two attempts a game. He also has a toolbox containing a variety of step backs. He likes to add up between the legs and his step backs to create space. He's comfortable shooting behind the screen when defenders go under. Ant loves these pull up threes in transition, but he's on the lower end of efficiency on pull up threes with players around the same volume. And I think his percentages are hindered by questionable shot selection. He loves these early shot clock threes and transition pull-ups, sometimes even contested. But his percentages don't justify his volume on these shots as he has hovered in the lower 30s of percentages throughout his four years in the league. His mid-range is a similar story. He has a very nice looking mid-range pull-up. He complements that with a variety of moves to create separation. He loves to get a defender going full speed and uses a pullback dribble for space to pull up. Despite that, he is dead last in mid-range field goal percentage of the 25 players with at least three attempts per game. Again, this may be due to questionable shot selection. He seems to dribble himself into a tough shot as opposed to escaping from a defender for an easier shot. The mid-range area is usually a sweet spot for most three-level scorers, especially in this era where scoring is dominated by the rim and the three-point line. Ant is also good off the ball. He will back cut defenders who overplay him with good technique. Look at the arm swim he uses to cut behind this defender. And he sometimes uses that physical and athletic frame to grab some audacious offensive rebounds. And this results in some highlight putback dunks when defenses are ball watching. His playmaking has also improved. In the pick and roll, he can make some nice pocket passes for easy offense. And I've seen him make that skip pass to the corner off a pick when the opposite defender tags the roller. He puts pressure on the rim, so these dump off passes are critical. And look at the placement on this beautiful lob pass, place where only Rudy Gobert can go get it. His drives set up some really nice kickout passes as well. 
I like this one because he reads the defender rotating to the corner and has that athleticism to jump above this defender to throw a beautiful dime to Cat for a three. His playmaking is spotty though, often missing easy entries. Here's a little lob to Gobert that's missed. His accuracy on his passes are sometimes whimsical. He throws this one to his teammate who is laying five feet from the sideline. He sometimes has good ideas, but his physical accuracy sometimes doesn't match that. He's not a natural playmaker and at times makes lazy passes. I also question his decision making a lot. He has a love for driving right into traffic and that mostly leads to turnovers. He's what I call a reactionary playmaker where he looks to pass after his scoring options run out and that also leads to bad passes and turnovers. This is a huge problem as teams will pack the paint and force him to be a playmaker as we've seen a few times this year. Forcing him to be a playmaker is essentially what neutralizes Ant. A lot of times he's a tunnel vision scorer. This used to play Kobe Bryant a lot during his career but Kobe was famously notorious for making difficult shots. Defensively is where it's interesting for Ant. In my opinion, he has the tools to be an all-NBA defender. His athleticism makes his recovery time insane for a guard. He goes from the block to the corner in a drop step to block this shot in the corner. And he has this knack for breaking up plays at the rim. He gets a hand on this dunk to break it up here. He is eye-opening on the ball when he's motivated. He moves laterally with ease and can stonewall an offensive player when they drive. He has really quick hands on top of that 6'9 wingspan and he can pickpocket ball handlers on a live dribble. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows defensively. He sometimes get caught sleeping or even getting lost especially guarding a non-offensive threat. You can see a fair share of missed rotations. He is late here on this rotation after the pass is caught. A lot of his problems come from a lack of effort and preparation. There is poor effort here to get around this down screen. Here he shows a poor effort to get in good position under the screen, then doesn't contest. On the ball, he oftentimes has trouble navigating screens. He doesn't get that foot around the screen and with Jalen Green, it's hard to recover. This one was comical. He spins around the first screen, then two steps past the next screen, and that's a bucket. He just doesn't seem interested or motivated defensively sometimes. There was no closeout to the corner, leaving Cat guarding two players. Then he just gambles 40 feet away from the basket and that opens the lane up for easy offense. Ironically, Minnesota has the best defensive rating in the NBA, but it's little to do with Anthony Edwards as he sometimes puts Rudy Gobert in vulnerable positions defensively. There is hope of just sheer will to defend that Ant will eventually be a consistent defender, but that affects his overall value. I personally would like to see Ant become a more determined rebounder as well, as he sometimes gets the scraps of the tip rebounds that bounce out to him. He has the physical and athletic ability to snatch rebounds that are airborne, and an increase in his defensive rebounding can catapult him into a transition where he can generate easier offense. When comparing him to other shooting guards with similar archetypes, the forecast is promising. His improvements have kept him on the trajectory of some elite company. His shooting from three and finishing ability makes him a deadly scorer. And I think as he improves his mid-range scoring efficiency and overall decision making, the Jordan and Kobe comparisons will be a reality. As for now, I see him at a early 2000s Vince Carter slash Tracy McGrady type player. Overall, his offensive ability to efficiently finish at the rim and consistently create his own shot gives him a really strong scoring foundation. While he has improved his playmaking, I still wouldn't have him at a primary playmaker as of yet due to some questionable decision making, but his experience will improve that weak spot offensively. Defensively, he possesses a lot of promise due to his athletic abilities to be an elite defender, but there is currently questions surrounding his motivation to put forth good defensive effort on a consistent basis. I'd say he is currently a lower level all NBA player who shows a lot of promise to eventually be a first team all NBA or MVP level player in at least the next couple years. Let me know your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, 
feel free to leave a like and subscribe for more content. And if you have time, check out some more content on the channel. I'll see you in the next one.